Welcome back to the final table of the Boyle Poker Irish Poker Championship. 400,000 euro at stake. I'll now hand you over to your commentary team. I'm Mike Carlson. With me are the Irish poker professional, the Prince of Pachin, Porig Parkinson. And with Porig and me is Tony Cascarino, the Ireland football international, now turned poker player. And I know already you're a better poker player than Porig is a footballer. I thought, I, I thought he was going to say a better poker player than I was a footballer. I was really concerned. <laughs> yeah, I was going to agree with that. <laughs> Let's take a look at the nine players who are at the final table, starting with the player in seat one, going from left to right. Mike Boland, a cabinet maker from Cork, and he starts out short stacked with only 195,000 in chips. The players bring with them the chips that they won in the qualifying tables. Player two, Damien Cavanaugh, a cable engineer from Dublin. 318,000. He's sixth on the table. The chip leader coming in is sitting in seat three. Flipper Walsh. Kieran Walsh from Cork. He's only 23, a sales rep, and he starts with almost 875,000 in chips. Next to him, the cat in the hat. Keith McInerney from Clare, 736,000. Pat O'Callaghan from Galway, an investment banker, has 418,000. Barney Boatman. From the Hendon Mob in England, 576,000. He is the third biggest stack. Sitting next to Barney Boatman, also from Britain, from Southampton, in fact, Maragia Mukesh. And he has the fourth biggest stack, 410,000, in his very first tournament. Next to him, the used car salesman from Dublin, Dave Masters, 243,500. He's third from the bottom, and the man just below him is sitting to his left in the ninth seat, Bill O'Keefe, a farmer from Cork, the second shortest stack, 198,500. We've got a 1,000 euro rolling ante. The blinds will start at 12,000 and 24,000 euros, and they will rise each hour. The players have already been playing for some 20-odd hours in their qualifying tables. Let's get to the final table now and let the action begin. Shuffle up and deal. What do you think? One experienced professional at this table, can, can he dominate the table? Well, he's certainly going to try to, but you know, Bill O'Keefe from Cork, he's uh, pretty experienced as well. You know, he's a, it says he's a farmer, but I thought farmers were supposed to be up at five o'clock in the morning to milk the cows, and this guy's always playing poker at five in the morning, so I don't know. <laughs> one, of the prob- one of the problems you can have is that the unexperienced players, you don't know how they play. Um, Barney, he would have played with a lot of guys that have already been knocked out. He hasn't got them at the final tables, but he'll, he'll learn pretty quickly in the first hour or so to judge ha- what sort of game they play. And you saw the button was in front of Barney. <laughs> the first to speak will be the farmer, Bill O'Keefe. He's passed. In fact, he passed right around to Flipper Walsh, who's got the ace three. 70,000 raise. And he's going to bet 70,000. And Barney with the ace and eight. You know, it's tough for Barney to call here with the ace eight, even though he's in front. You know, if you start calling raises so with ace eight, you're going to get yourself into an awful lot of trouble. And also the fact, you know, the chip leader, you're looking at Kieran, he's he's going to start bullying straight away, and ace three, it's an end you're certainly not going to flat call on. Interesting too, he showed Barney the ace. Well, that, that can be a mistake, because normally when you sh- if you show a professional an ace, it normally means that the other the other card is a low one and that you've actually been on a semi-steal. You know, you're better off uh, sh- showing absolutely nothing. So the story of this game so far, the short stacks have been stealing the blinds. They've worked themselves up above the 200,000 mark. But the chip leader is still Flipper Walsh. Not showing a whole lot behind those sunglasses. Show a good pass in, mate. Barney Boatman is giving out little rec- little commendations from the pros. Well, I think he's going to, you know, he's used to talking on air, and uh, I think he'll try and intimidate a little bit on this final table. He knows he's got a number of inexperienced players there and try and take advantage of that. I mean, he's got a lot of TV experience, Barney, you know, both as a commentator and as a player. And Mike Boland is going all in. You saw him through the chandelier with an ace and a ten. So he's going all in. He is still short stacked. And he's all in and out of the, off the table. <laughs> well, it's no surprise in going all in when you're short stacked with an ace ten. It's uh, not a bad hand. Um, he'll be a little bit nervous walking around taking water there because he's really desperately just trying to take in the, uh, the small of the big blind plus the running antis. Yeah, the running anti makes stealing the blinds an awful lot uh, more lucrative. And Dave Masters now with a 7-2. and two. 
suited, and you, you heard him say, I'll see if I can double you up. I don't but, you might have been kidding. I think so. <laughs> There's some hands you don't want to be playing with, and that's one of them. Uh, oh. I think the big question is, is that water he's taking there from that bottle? I can hope not. <laughs> so, it's all the way around. Masters has folded, and Bill O'Keefe now with a queen nine, and he's having a think. Now he folds as well. So the all-in bet from Mike Boland takes the hand. Flipper is still the chip leader. <laughs> Keith McInerney, the cat in the hat, has been very, very quiet. And so has the man next to him, Pat O'Callaghan. And don't be put off by the empty seat. We are playing nine-handed, but occasionally a player does leave the table. When you gotta go, you gotta go. The button's in front of Dave Masters. False. The flipper's folded. False. The hat folds. False. False. A couple more folds. And Dave's got the king six on the button. I think it's the first time anybody's ever worn a tea cozy to a final in Ireland. We'll, we'll have to check the record books for that one. <laughs> and Dave Masters is going all in with the King Six on the button now. Well, this is a typical button raise of really trying to scare in the, the two, the small blind and the big blind. Well, he got rid of one, but Mike Boland's got the suited ace jack. Well, as Tony says, uh, it's much easier to call a button raise than a raise from a sort of an early position, so I think he'd be calling this with the ace jack. <laughs> With his chip stack, uh, he'd be silly not to. Which is it there? Yeah, and Mike Boland has called him. He's going to be about a two to one favourite here. I need to double up and gamble. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> not that much of a gamble. <laughs> well, that's what they call gambling in Cork, I think. <laughs> I don't think he had much alternative there. You know, he, he needed to get some chips, and he admitted himself he wants to double up. Tells his friends now, and as, as you do, your nervous wait. And they're both up and pacing, waiting for that flop. And there's nothing much on the flop. Oh, that was a great flop there for Mike Boland. Uh, no pair made him even the bigger favourite. But on the turn, there's a six. Oh, my God, that's really unlucky. And the river is a nine, and Mike Boland is going to be eliminated. Dave Masters takes the all in. And let's hear from the man who says goodbye. Oh, well, we're in with the best hands. Chances of him winning with the hands. 50 50 in the end of the day, really, when you think about it. But I was a good bit average wise, I was a good bit ahead. But sure, that's the way the cars flop. I've enjoyed the tournaments. So you're not annoyed with yourself or too disappointed? No. I, put, I was lost that coming in. I expected to be one of the earliest ones out. I was going to move, I wasn't going to hang around. I got two good hands and I used them. I was just unlucky. Any plans what you're going to spend your prize money on? Huh? Any plans what you're going to spend your prize I money on? I hate to see it right now. <laughs>